It was my privilege to just present the main results of the REDUCIT trial. REDUCIT randomized over 8,000 patients with elevated triglycerides in a range of 150 to 500, in fact it ended up being 135 to 500, who also had either secondary prevention type indications, namely stable coronary artery disease, cerebrovascular disease, or peripheral artery disease, or what we call a primary prevention cohort that was actually patients with diabetes and at least one additional cardiovascular risk factor. Such patients were randomized to receive either icosapent ethyl, a highly purified version of EPA or icosapentenoic acid, versus placebo. The dose of icosapentethyl that was used was four grams per day. It's a prescription medicine that's sometimes used for people with really high triglycerides. We studied patients in a triglyceride range below which the drug is actually approved for use. And what we found in our overall study of patients who were well treated with statins, average LDL cholesterol of 75, was a significant 25% reduction in cardiovascular events, including a 26% reduction in cardiovascular death, myocardial infarction, or stroke, including as well a 20% reduction in dying from cardiovascular causes. So the trial was very positive in terms of its primary and key secondary endpoints, as well as different components of those endpoints. So overall, I think a trial that should hopefully be practice changing in patients of the sort that I just described. And I think the type of patient that I described is pretty generalizable. Uh, in the trial, we ended up randomizing 43% of the patients we screen. So I think this is something that will be highly relevant to cardiologists, endocrinologists, and primary care physicians. I'll point out again, this is a prescription medication. It's very different from over-the-counter supplements. Uh, so I wouldn't extrapolate these results at all to over-the-counter supplements. Uh, in terms of safety and tolerability, it was as well tolerated as placebo. We did see a small excess in atrial fibrillation that was significant with icosapentethyl, but on the other hand, there was a 28% reduction in stroke with icosapentethyl versus placebo, so that is quite reassuring in that regard. And there was a trend, albeit not statistically significant, to more serious bleeding with icosapentethyl versus placebo, though no excess in bleeding into the brain or into the gut or any fatal bleeding. So overall, it seems to be, to me, a major advance in cardiovascular prevention, perhaps akin to the breakthrough when statins first entered the cardiovascular prevention scene.